Dr. Danes joins me from New York City tonight to discuss his pet project and its fate now that a new administration is headed to Albany. Good evening, sir. Hello, how are you? Very well, and tonight you're still talking about this soda tax. Talk to me a little bit about what you hope to accomplish in the two months left in this administration. Well, what I've been doing is actually looking back at the campaign we ran this time around to understand what we did right, what didn't work, and, and how if there's a future opportunity at some time we can push the campaign again. Well, what didn't work seems to be what took it down. In one of your speeches, you said there was a campaign against this tax that really turned the general public against it. Oh, yes. The, the opposition spent at least $13 million campaigning against it. They set up AstroTurf groups. They ran ads and that. And they, and they were successful, I think, in kind of convincing the public of two things that really weren't true. One was that it was dead on arrival, that it didn't have a chance. And, of course, we were right there in the budget uh, arguments for seven months, and then they had to spend a lot of money to defeat it. And then they, they kept, and I'll, I'll blame you folks in the media, they kept calling it a fat tax. And, of course, it it wasn't a tax on fat or on overweight people. It was a tax on the sugary beverages that the beverage companies are making big profits from and that are making children fat. So that, those are the two things that they used against us, and we learned from it. And I think sometime in the future, there'll be an opportunity to return to these principles. Well, so here's your pitch right now. If you had to re-educate the public or bring it about in a different manner to really convince people that this tax was worth it, what would you say? Well, I'd, I'd remind people that what is really what is really stretching our pocketbooks is the cost of obesity. The, they just estimated $147 billion nationally. 9% of the health budget is going into obesity, and diabetes may double or triple in the next 20 or 30 years. So uh, th that, that's what's really going to break the bank as far as health care costs. We understand that if, if, the, if we implemented a tax like this, what happens is people don't just go on and drink the same amount of soda, they cut back on their consumption, they don't pay as much out for beverages and taxes combined, and they actually save money and have better health. And in this case, the state would have brought in some revenue that we needed as well. You did have some allies in this fight. Certainly not everybody was lining up against you. Mayor Bloomberg, for instance, in New York City had suggested possibly limiting the sale of soda using food stamps. Do you think that would be effective? Well, that, that's an active proposal. We were down in Washington on Friday. Uh, Tom Farley from New York City and I were down there at the Department of Agriculture that has to make the decision. And that's an active proposal for a demonstration project to restrict food stamp purchases of sugary beverages and then study and see what the effect is. The, the city that Tom Farley and the Health Department and Mayor Bloomberg were great allies of the governor and I in, in pushing this forward this time. Well, you say the governor is in Governor Patterson, but Governor-elect Cuomo has said time and time again, no new taxes. This would count as a new tax if the soda tax went into effect. How would he justify it? Well, well, no, I understand exactly what he said. The, you know, I, I think it, what did Brutus say to Cassius? There's a tide in the affair of men, and we, we, missed, we missed the tide this time, and I, I hope at some future time there's a tide that runs with it, but I think Governor-elect Cuomo's correct. The tide is running against new taxes, and we have to accept that. But do you continue to run with this proposal? If you continued on to the next administration, would this be something you continue uh, I, to push for? Uh, we're, what we're going to continue to push with is the, is the idea we've got to reduce soda consumption. It's one of the key drivers of the obesity epidemic. It's something we can correct without hurting people, without hurting their pocketbooks. And whatever it takes, whether it's the food stamp proposal, whether it's more public health education, whether it's common sense restrictions in schools and other places, we're going to do all of those things things and not put all of our eggs in one basket, whether it's taxes or regulation or public health education. Going back through everything that went wrong with this proposal, do you feel confident if he ran back at it again, you could do it the right way? Uh, it, this is going to be an ongoing battle. We, we take a lot of encouragement from the, from the fights over tobacco over the decades because a lot of things the first time around you put them out there and people say you can never do that. You know, for, for example, uh, restrictions on cigarette advertising, restrictions on where you could sell cigarettes, restrictions on indoor smoking. When the, when the mayor first proposed those in New York City, remember everybody said you can't do that. The restaurants and bars will go out of business. It'll be the end of nightlife 
life in New York. Took a few years, it got done, and I challenge you to find practically anyone in this in this whole state that would go back to the way it was before. So we understand it's an iterative process of educating, listening to the public, sometimes refining the proposals, and then coming back again until we make the public health progress we need to. Well, you bring up tobacco. I have to ask you, what are your thoughts on the new advertisements that are going to be on the outside of cigarette cases? Do you think that's going to help deter people from smoking? Yes, that's terrific. That's an example, really, of federal-state cooperation because the, the, there's federal preemption. They, they have to take that step, but we have studies coming out of our people in New York that show that those kind of what we call aversive advertisements trigger people to call our quit line up in Buffalo, and we, we know the more hard-hitting advertisements we get in front of people, then they'll call our quit line, they'll get nicotine replacement products, and we get a lot of them on that, on that pathway to really getting off of cigarettes. They have been criticized as being too graphic, though. Do you think they're too much? Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm a physician. I've seen what cancer and smoking really do, so there, I, I have to tell people, you haven't seen the half of it if you think those advertisements are the worst of it. The, the, worst, the worst things, and we can't show them in an advertisement, are the broken hearts and the shortened lives that cigarettes cause, and, and even the worst of the advertisements just can't seem to show that. Well, you're speaking about the adverse effects of some products. Another big thing in the news right now is that for loco beverage. What are your thoughts on banning that? Senior Senator Chuck Schumer has been all over the state really advocating a statewide ban on for loco. What do you think? What well, I, I speak Spanish, and I know what loco means. It means crazy, and you'd really have to be crazy to drink that stuff, and I think we're crazy as a society to allow it to be sold. I, as a physician, the, the combination of alcohol and caffeine pushed into the same drink and encouraging people to drink it really does sound loco to me, and I hope, I hope Senator Schumer is successful federally. I hope we can come up with some ways to restrict or ban it in New York State because it's just a dreadful, dreadful idea to have it out there. There. But the argument against that, though, is the same as against the soda tax. People saying we can make our own decisions. We don't need federal or state regulations telling us we can't do it. But you think there needs to be a ban? Well, go, go, back, go back to soda and, and obesity. They say people can make their own decisions, but we've created a, what we call an obesogenic environment when more than 60% of adults are overweight or obese. Childhood obesity has tripled or quadrupled. That's not because parents became bad parents over the last 30 years. I think parents are struggling and doing a really good job, but the environment has turned against them. The advertising is pervasive, the, the costs of drugs and and they're tricked in every way to make the wrong decisions and then the beverage companies come in and they have this idea well people should make their own decisions uh, pe people deserve some help and in this case we have to correct the price of these underpriced oversized beverages in the case of, of for loco I think we have to just get a real a really badly designed badly conceptualized product off the market well, you're talking about this really aggressive advertising, taxing these products, banning them all together. Do you think it's education that's the problem? People just aren't educated enough about these products? No, if you think back, and I think anyone would agree, we've had far more education about overweight and obesity and nutrition in the last 30 years than I ever remember when I was growing up before we had su such rates of overweight. What we have of an, is an underpriced product and then a beverage industry that spends billions of dollars advertising. In one year, Coca-Cola will spend $775 million advertising their sugary drinks. And then, you know, New York City runs a, an advert, a, a campaign called Pour on the Pounds for a couple of hundred thousand dollars, and they're criticized for doing it. They're going up against hundreds of millions, literally billions of dollars of advertising encouraging overconsumption. The, the industry takes penguins and polar bears and Santa Claus and puts them in their advertisements so that young children bond with these drinks in their early childhood, and then they can count on drinking them throughout their adult years. It's certainly a lot of money in advertising. And just switching gears lastly tonight, it is flu season, and there was a bunch of hubbub last year about getting the flu shots, the mandatory flu shots. What do you think going into this flu season? What would your advice be to families? 
uh, the, the advice is get the flu shot. I, I got mine. We're having really great uptake all over the state, in particular in our health care institutions. It's, it's a lot easier year. There's plenty of the vaccine available everywhere. And this year's formulation includes the H1N1 from last year, plus the other two train, strains that we expect might come around. So this is a, a good year to go out and just get that one simple flu shot instead of all of that complicated process last year of looking for where you could get it and then having to come back for a second shot. Yeah, do you think New York State is equipped this year to deal with the demand of flu shots, people wanting to come in and get them done? Yes, you know, we, we've had, a, because of all of the things we put into place last year, we're better equipped than ever. The, the hospitals and clinics and doctors are, are all registered and, and doing it. A lot of our, of our commercial pharmacies have decided to do that. I, when I walk along the city uh, streets now, I see all of the big, uh, big chains offering flu shots in their front window. I, I saw a great ad on the subway, actually, the other day. It says, the flu rides this train, too. I think that was a city <laughs> ad. And, and it really reminds people that in these crowded New York City conditions, you really want to take the flu shot. Well, obviously, a, a range of topics that you're able to speak from with just two months left in the Patterson administration. What are the messages that you want to hit home before you hang up your hat? Well, you've really touched them. We have a great health care uh, industry in this state, wonderful hospitals, doctors and nurses, and people ought to take advantage of them to have really great health, and they ought to do the, the things they need to do themselves, and that's exercise and better nutrition. Dr. Danes, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We hope to speak with you again soon. Great. Thank you.